Up next, Wonderfest 2023. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Initiative Modeler. This is my Wonderfest 2023 video. The show concluded last weekend, and what a great, great show. Uh, from the moment I walked in uh, to register my models at Friday evening, I could tell there was a lot of positivity, a lot of positive energy in the air, and that certainly carried through the entire show. Everyone had a great time. Uh, the vendors had a fantastic show. The ones I spoke to, they were telling me it was the best show they've ever had. And the uh, show was well attended. The uh, model show had, I think the final count was uh, 1,046 entries, I believe. So it, was a, it broke a record and uh, some beautiful work there as always on display. Uh, highlights included meeting Nick Tate. As, I, as you saw earlier this week, I posted my video of his interview there. Uh, really a pleasure to meet him. And I do have a couple other things to post about that interview in this video as well. And um, got to, to got to hang out with some friends here. Uh, you can see this was a photo of us at the Spaghetti Factory. Uh, the group I hung out included Lou Dalmasso sitting across from me there, uh, Ken Spriggs, uh, we got Wayne from World of Wayne and his wife Esther sitting across from him, and Phil Segal from Spruverse, and Paul Bodensick, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from Paragraphics. First time I met him, really great guy to talk to. Uh, the second evening, we went out to Mama's Pickles and Mustard. Uh, this is a restaurant we've been to a few times now, and the group uh, included Lou Del Masso, Phil Segal, Ken Spriggs, and uh, Rick Sternbach joined us, uh, as well as my friend John Everett. So a great time, really had a fun time, and uh, I'm so happy that I went this year. I would highly encourage you guys going if you get a chance. It, it's such a fantastic show. To update you on a few things, uh, first of all, I, I brought a lot of models, as you saw. In fact, there were 14 in all, and it sounds like a lot. Well, it was a lot, but at least most of them, half of them consisted of the bus, so they weren't too bad to pack. Um, but did have a mishap with two of them, and you'll learn about that at the beginning of the video. So I ended up entering 13 of the 14, and all of them received an award, which I was very pleased about. Uh, you know, I go to these shows not really anticipating I'm going to get an award. It's really just a to uh, share my, my bills with uh, with people. and uh, But it's always nice to, to be awarded and be recognized that way. So this is how it all stacked up here. I had two merit awards, one for Six Million Dollar Man and Moff Gideon, 10 bronze awards. This included the Trek Bus, the Land Ram, the Moon Buggy, and B2 EMO. And one silver, which I was really excited about for my Johnny Quest diorama, which I built exclusively for the show. Uh, I wanted to take this one because it's such a unique piece. And uh, I was really excited to see that it won a silver. By the way, this is what the silver award looks like in case you're interested. And the land ram, by the way, was also photographed by Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. Well, as you can imagine, after taking so many models, uh, I didn't have much room in my luggage. Uh, I did gift, by the way, the uh, moon buggy to my friend Gordon Moriguchi, so that left a little room for one model. And I decided on the Marauder from the Bad Batch series. Uh, they used this model in an airbrush class at Wonderfest, and there, a number of them were on display at the model show and I really do like the way the model looks. It's a, it's not a huge model. I thought it was going to be bigger than this. Um, so it's perfect size for me. So I decided to get a hold of it and I bought it from cultvman.com. So definitely looking forward to building this one. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the video now. And I want to make note that I've deviated from my plan that I outlined in my Wonderfest preview. If you recall, I was going to throw in several interviews along with everything else, but I've decided to uh, uh, separate two more interviews out. Uh, one is going to be with Bill Krauss, who is known for designing the USS Titan that we saw in uh, Season 3 of Picard. And also split off an interview that I did with Phil Siegel from Spruvers. Phil is a former Hollywood producer. He had quite a long career there in Hollywood. And he retired uh, a few years ago and started this channel called Spruvers. He's a fun guy. I think you'll enjoy that interview. Now, I did leave uh, two interviews in place here. One is with George from Blackheart Models. He's going to catch us up with what's going on there. And the other is with Todd Morton and Gordon Moriguchi from Space 1999 Props and Chips as they tell us a bit about that beautiful eagle display that was next to Nick Tate's table. And uh, also we'll say a quick hello to Steve Iverson from CultTVMan.com. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Industry Modeler. This is day one of Wonderfest 2023. I am in the hotel across from the Crown Plaza where the uh, convention is being held. And I uh, got in yesterday without any problems. Uh, took about three hours to fly from San Diego to Chicago. 
Uh, I had a two hour layover there and then about an hour flight from Chicago uh, down here. So luckily I didn't have to fly into O'Hare, I flew into Midway, which is uh, I think always a little easier. <laughs> so, um, so the flight went well. Um, unfortunately, just to catch you up on the models here, the Air Tram was the worst of it. Uh, take a look at this picture here. You can see it became dislodged from its supports and a lot of figures came loose, which that's not a big deal, uh, but the floor did get warped a bit. And I probably should have anticipated this because the, the temperature, I'm sure, where the cargo is held or the, uh, the luggage is held gets pretty cold up there. And one of the things you do to, uh, to free things from super glue is to put them in, in some sort of cold environment like a freezer. So no doubt that's what really caused a lot of these issues as well as them throwing the luggage around. I'm sure that didn't help either. Um, so it was bad enough that I think, um, you know, well, I should say it's repairable. Uh, but I decided to just set it aside and not display it today because I just know all this is going to happen again. So I'm just um, not going to mess with it. Uh, every, all the other models uh, went through okay uh, without a problem. Uh, I should say with one other exception is the moon buggy. But this was repairable. This one just came off uh, the base there and the figures um, became dislodged too. But I was able to put everything back together there. So um, what is coming up today now, it's about 7.30 in the morning here. I'm sure people are already lined up to... Uh, register their models. So uh, I, I registered for the show yesterday and I'm going to head on over here just shortly to get in line for that. So even though they give you till noon to get your models in, I just want to get that out of the way because I have a bunch of other things I want to do. Uh, and so after I do that, I will be um, taking some video around the vendor room. I kind of show you what's, uh, what's up there this year. And um, then I will um, get started with the interviews, which I'm really excited about. Um, and happy to share with you. As for tomorrow, what I plan to do is record the, the model show because all the models will be on the table by then. And um, yeah, and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. So as you can see, there were quite a few people in line for model registration. I wanted to see who was at the head of the line and I happened to run into Shang Hui. He's a guy who I met last year at Orange Con in Anaheim. Here he is with his blockade runner, which won best of show, and he brought it to Wonderfest. To avoid any shipping mishaps, he decided to carry the model onto the plane and this required that he buy a seat for the model itself. All right, so at the head of the line is Yang. He was here since uh, 5.30 this morning, right? 5.30, wow. yeah. 5.30, okay. Uh, where are you from? Uh, Los Angeles. From Los Angeles. Oh, so you flew in the same... Yeah, that's right, that's right, from California. Now, hopefully your trip was uneventful. <laughs> well, uh, my, my, I had to buy a, a seat for my Oh, my model. for your model. Oh, yeah. So that's <laughs> the one you showed at the other... Uh, yes, uh, yeah, show. Oh, okay. So, Wait till you see that. Right. Yeah, and uh, right. yeah, well, the, the LA attendees know what to do, but the yeah. uh, case agents they didn't know what to do, so <laughs> had a little bit of a hassle, but uh, yeah, well, good. Well, to be good here. Luck. All right, thank you. <laughs> well, it was off then to the show floor, where as you can see, it was packed with all kinds of fantastic merchandise. I caught up with Steve Iverson from CultTVMan.com. Well, hey guys, I'm here with Steve Iverson from CultTVMan.com. Very famous CultTVMan.com. I, I want to, I was just telling him thank you very much for having such a fantastic website. Uh, most of us for years have been looking for, you know, we never had the stuff available in hobby shops. And uh, but you do such a, such a great job. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate awesome. it. Yeah. Appreciate your business. Oh, Been a absolutely. good customer all these years. Yeah. Yeah. So having a good show. Very good show. You know, it's the <laughs> start of Saturday morning, mm -hmm. so things are just warming up. It's the early bird right now. Yeah. Once the, there's probably a line outside the door waiting to get in, and yeah. I'm waiting for that second wave. Now. All right. Very good. Well, have a good show. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for saying hello. Appreciate all it. All right. Next, I visited Dealer Room B, which is right across from the main vendor room. It's in this room where you can greet and get autographs from show guests, see more vendors, and they often have additional models on display. Here's a look at some of the beautiful Star Wars models they had on hand.
and take a look at this incredible replica of Yoda. This year, I decided to do a little cosplay and caught up with my friend, the Mediocre Modeler. Okay guys, well I'm here with the Mediocre Modeler, and he always comes playing, uh, doing some cosplay, and his costume this year is just as fantastic as last year. So, uh, I added, I added a little bit to it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right there. Very nice. <laughs> So I decided to partake in a little cosplay this year as well. Then it was off to meet with George from Blackheart Models. Well, hey guys, we're here now with George from Blackheart Models, and as you know, I featured uh, a number of sculpts from Blackheart on my channel. Always in, uh, impressed by the consistent quality, and just uh, they're just beautiful pieces to work with. So um, we're going to talk, spend a little bit, of, a few minutes here with George. And uh, so, how's it going? Good, good. Let me Have, first, having a good show? Yeah, but yeah. let me first say what you just said. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're having a good show. Yeah, yeah good. And, and I'm glad you like our stuff. Yeah, and it sort of seems like we're kind of back in the swing of things this year, right? I think so. Yeah. You know, last year uh, at this show, this was, it was the best show we ever had. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how we're doing the, uh, yeah. how well we're doing today, but we're doing really well, and, yeah. and we might even top last year. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. a lot of people turned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. we're back in. That's fantastic. Oh. Well, as I said, I'm always impressed by the incredible likenesses you have, particularly you know with these sculpts and stuff. Can you tell us a bit about the people who designed them for you? Um, we're, we're fortunate to work with uh, very talented artists, mm -hmm. people that I've worked with for up to you know 25 years. Yeah. Jeff Yeager, um, Joe Simon, mm -hmm. Chris Elizardo. Yeah. Um, those are guys who are doing a lot of stuff for us right now. Yeah. Uh, we've got Rick, Rich Erickson who kind of just came on with us and has been doing really good work. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just lucky to have mm -hmm. uh, so fantastic. many talented artists that we're buddies with and who, who yeah. like working with us. Yeah, right. It's right. been great. Yeah. It's always uh, fun to come to your table. Um, do you have a few new things that you could show us that you're uh, we do. kind of expanding into? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've wanted to get into sci-fi hardware oh, for okay. a long time. Uh -huh. And you know, several years ago, you picked up our Predator Pod. Yes. A planetary mm -hmm. uh, orbiting, or orbital drone. Yes. Um, um, and it's kind of it was intended to be kind of a crossover piece for folks who are into sci-fi hardware mm -hmm. but there's also a figure mm -hmm. and so we wanted to see if we can get some of the hardware folks to get into the monsters sure. and the figure painting yeah. and so we followed that up finally after all these years with a couple of new pieces mm -hmm. one is we call it the bounty hunter fighter, but it's, it's the Mandalorian ship, mm -hmm. and uh, based on the Mandalorian's new vehicle after the destruction of the Razor Crest. Yes. Um, and there it is. It's about 124th, 120th to 124th scale. I'm not exactly sure. I got to mm -hmm. figure that out. Um, but it was sculpted by Eric Askew, a new guy that we've been working with, uh -huh. a very talented 3D uh, artist, digital yeah. artist. Um, it comes with the figure. It comes with uh, Grogu in, in the bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, we were. I was online and I saw people complaining about the new ship. They don't yeah. like the fact that Mando, who is a bounty hunter, now has a two-person vehicle. How is he going to transport his bounties? Yeah. Well, that's easy. Yeah. Carbonite. There you go. <laughs> and so and so we got them. Yeah. And uh, it, this is its debut. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we uh, weren't sure what we would charge um, for it. Mm -hmm. I talked to you a little bit. I've talked to some other folks. Sure. But it's going to be in the neighborhood of two, 200 bucks. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we also came, another debut is... Um, Judge Dredd, mm -hmm. the 2012 version okay. with Carl Urban. Mm -hmm. And we came up with what we call Judge Dredd's SM33 bike. Mm -hmm. The SM is for Sid Mead, mm -hmm. the futurist concept yes. artist. Mm -hmm. And the 33 is the year he was born. So oh, SM33. Nice. Very nice, yeah. And uh, we didn't really care for the, the bike in the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we designed our own, inspired by Sid oh, Mead's see. work. Uh -huh. uh, the kit comes with two figures. Mm -hmm. Carl Urban is Judge Dredd. Mm -hmm. And uh, Olivia Thoroughby as Judge Anderson. Yeah. 
And so, um, we're debuting. People have been pretty well received. Yeah, that's great. Uh, very simple uh, to put together. Mm -hmm. That bike is not nearly as complicated. I don't think it looks all that complicated, but it's even less complicated. Yeah. Very simple to yeah. put together. Well, I think you got some really good, I think you got a hit on your hand. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope I so. so. And I want to do more. Right? Yeah. I think it's fun. And you know, I think to survive in this business, you need to keep expanding and, yeah. and drawing new people in. Right. And I'd love to see more crossover. Yeah. You know, people yeah. who are into hardware, getting into science fiction sure. and that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Well, it's always a pleasure, George. Thank Good you very much for spending mine. a few minutes with us. Thank you, Ogie. All right, guys. Well, we've been keeping up with the channel. You know, earlier this week, I posted my interview with Nick Tate. And as I was going through the rest of the video clips here for this uh, video that I'm making, I came across a little extra footage of Nick Tate interacting with a fan that Ken Spriggs, who recorded the interview for me, had happened to capture. I thought it'd be cool to share here with you. Let's take a look. I enjoyed every minute of you on, on Space 1999. Yeah, I enjoyed every minute of doing it. And I gotta tell you, it was a kid's dream come true. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always wanted to be in cowboy movies. Yeah. But by the time I was old enough to be a cowboy, yeah. they were passe. Yeah. You know, yeah. now you had to be an astronaut. <laughs> suddenly I got one. <laughs> you got to be, yeah. Kind of like a yeah. dream come true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the funny great. part about it was I was, I was contracted to do two other shows, mm -hmm. which I was juggling at the time. One of them was a theater. I was going to play Stanley Kowalski in Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, wow. Uh, in, wow. Uh, in London. Wow. And, um, well, in fact, it was going to be in Nottingham first and then probably go into London when Bruce Gingell, who was an Australian producer from Channel 7 in Sydney, had come to work for Lou Grade in New York, in, in London, and be his right-hand man. And Bruce had worked with me in Australia. And he said to the Andersons, you've got to find a spot for Nick Tate. He's great, you know. And they went, well, we've cast everything. Oh, there might be a couple of little roles. And he said, well, anyway, meet him. So I went down and I met uh, the Andersons. And they offered me the role of a, an astronaut that was going to die, be killed in the first episode. And I just, I loved the concept of everything they were doing and I wanted to be in the show. I turned down Streetcar Named Desire to do a, a one scene in Space Nine, first episode of Space 1999 in which I would be killed. They didn't kill your character. No, because it wasn't my character. When I started working with him, Lee Katzen, the director, came up to me and he said, I don't want to kill you. He said, I, I like what you're doing here. He said, are you available to do the series? And I went, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm available. So my dream came true. Wow. And you were, you were like a big influence for me, I can tell you that. And I just won an award with my... Um, did you? I won an award with uh, an X01 model. I, I just show me. Is this a picture of it? No, but I have a picture of it right here. I'll take. Well, well picture. done. I just went up to the room and saw all the wonderful it's models. Amazing, yes. I spent yeah. almost two years on this. I wasn't sure it was going to be ready for the show. My wife had cancer surgery in April. Wow. But, uh, How is she? She's doing. What she's here and she's doing well. Great. <laughs> she's doing very well. Well done. Yeah. So. Oh, that is I spent, beautiful. I spent a lot of time on that. That's fabulous. That's incredible. Yeah. And George informed me. How big me is that? It's 26 inches long. And it's about 14 inches in height. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a good size. Man. There, there's a lot of smaller scale models. Can I see it upstairs? Sure, you want to keep the picture? You'd be welcome to keep it if you want. Thank you. <laughs> keep it. You got more? Uh, uh, I have more pictures, yeah. You got plenty. I got plenty of them. Thank you very much. Yeah, yes. This is my you want to you wanna sign it for me now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign it for you, and you can keep that too. Okay. Can I borrow one of your? Pens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go sure. for it. All right, staying in the Space 1999 universe, we're going to catch up here with Todd and Gordon from Space 1999 Props and Ships. They sponsored, by the way, Nick Tate being here. So thank you very much for doing that. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, it's a real treat to meet him. So tell me about your display here. You got all these eagles um, the, uh, displayed here. Um, what scale do they start from and where, where do they end up at? I'm going to let Gordon tell you that because he <laughs> is the scale master. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we'll start with the big and we'll go down, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is a, uh, an 88-inch Eagle build, probably one of a kind, especially in this configuration, mm -hmm. uh, built by Andrew Grimshaw out of the UK and a team of, uh, with Jeff, Jeff uh, Gaskell and Philip Howard mm -hmm. uh, helped him out. Wow. Amazing work of art, actually. It's 
I, I can't believe the dimensions and how they detailed it. It's just amazing. And yeah. uh, I found the opportunity to, uh, to obtain it. It's about a 112th scale, wow. I think, because uh -huh. the 44s are considered 124. Uh -huh. So we have the three 44s here. This one here was built by uh, Ben Pamarayan out of California. Mm -hmm. That's Mike Readers. We wanted my, I wanted Mike Readers Eagle to be kind of front and center to show yeah. off the aluminum sure. that he produces, uh -huh. and uh, that's the 1612 uh, Lab Eagle IV mm -hmm. uh, with spine booster. All of these are basically the the, the representation of all everything of uh, the Eagle Four. Wow. So you have um, um, the 22 inch. The Eagle 2 version, the Eagle 1 version, um, and then you have the new 14-inch uh, 172nd. Uh, by the way, the 22 uh, is about 148 scale. Mm -hmm. The the 14-inch is um, uh, 172nd. The 12-inch, which is the next one down, used to be considered the 172nd, but I think it's like 196 or whatever. Mm -hmm. The next one down is actually Eagle Moss. That's the uh, oh, yeah. the the other one that's uh, mass produced. Uh -huh. It's about 10 inches. Don't even know what the um, scale is. I guess somebody can figure out the math. And then we have the um, the IMIs. These these are the Japanese kits that are heavily heavily modded. Yeah. Uh, but they're about the uh, dinky size, eight inches. Yeah. They fit right in the box and they look really good too. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just yeah. to let you know, it, it almost makes it look like you're uh, this is what I really wanted when I was a kid, a kid yeah and then um, the next one down is uh, what the 1612 uh, five inch uh -huh. and then over here I had a couple of extras the the, the one in between the uh, IMI and the uh, the 1612 is a Teru extremely rare kit yeah that's um, I think there was a, like a wonder festival in Japan mm -hmm. uh, that uh, was either giving those out or selling those they had like a one-day ITV license mm -hmm. or something like that yeah. and then uh, the very smallest one Todd can actually talk a little bit about that one the small one uh, was built by David Jacobs and it's basically a 3d printed and he just you know how he is he's just he can add that oh, finesse absolutely. to everything yeah absolutely. right right so yeah it's, oh, cool. it's it's really it's like three and three quarter inch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so as you can see the whole overall display is uh, kind of a plug into MPC we, I, I wanted to plug in MPC with the Eagle 4 kit that just came out this year yeah uh, at the 14 inch uh, 14 inch 172nd scale here's the original artwork mm -hmm. right here um, oh, wow. I'm proud to uh, yes. own that now Wow and then here's some of his original drawings uh, to get to that artwork here yeah um, and Jamie paints all these then huh Yes, he does. Jamie wow. Hood uh, from Round 2 actually yeah. does all the cover work Beautiful. from the first 22-inch 22, uh, 22 um, Eagle kit yeah. all the way to the latest and greatest. Yeah. And this year is no different. Uh, we had three Space 1999 kits come out this year. Yeah. We had um, what the Moon Buggy, which is kind of a descendant of the Area 2 kit, the Eagle 4, which is... Um, Sort of a descendant off the original 14-inch 2019 Eagle Transporter kit. Yeah. They just swapped out the um, uh, the, uh, the 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 transporter pod for the lab pod, and then added the spine booster. Oh, very good. Uh, and then um, uh, oh, the re-release of the uh, the yeah. the cargo winch. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you guys for having such a great Facebook page and community. You guys have really done a lot to um, not only bring Space 99 fans together, but really you guys have played a role in, in make a resurgence of these uh, Space 1999 models, uh, most of which we can only, well, all of them I can say, we only dream of having oh, yeah. uh, because cause we didn't have anything accurate for the longest time. So thank you very much, and it's good catching up with you guys. Well, you're a part yeah. of the community all right. too, pal. So. All right. It's honor. Appreciate thank it. You so thank much. you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's time to take a look at the Mono Show, and bear in mind there were over 1,040 entries in this show, so I wasn't going to be able to capture, at least that wasn't my goal here, was to capture every single model. So uh, the ones that you see here on the slideshow just caught my eye. It was just kind of snapping away. If yours isn't pictured here, doesn't mean I didn't like your model. Uh, there were just so many to choose from. So. Um, uh, if you'd like to see the entire lineup, uh, I've already come across a couple videos on YouTube that do that. They just kind of pan through the whole uh, show, and I'll post a link to a couple down below uh, in case you're interested in looking at something like that. And here's a look at the showroom. You can see all the tables are pretty much full. Now, there were a couple of things that caught my eye when I first walked in. Both were in the far left corner of the room. One was a full-size replica of Maria from Metropolis, you can see here. And the second was this beautifully done X-Wing, a pretty big size. I would say it's almost studio scale size. It was built by David Jacobs. David is the guy who built the DeLorean that spun around last year, uh, won a special award. You can see his picture of it. 
And in his usual fashion, he went all out with this X-Wing. Uh, the head uh, of the pilot goes back and forth, as well as the head of the R2 unit, you'll see that. And uh, also what I love are these little graphics that he put on a display screen at the bottom of the base there. And these are the graphics of the Death Star plans that we saw in A New Hope. So before I get the slideshow started, we're going to talk first briefly with David Jacobs, who built that X-Wing. Okay, guys, well, I'm here, here with David, who constructed this beautiful X-Wing. He's going to tell us a little bit about how he put it together. First of all, David, how, many, how long did it take for you to put this together? Probably maybe, but maybe less than 300 hours. 300 hours, yeah. wow. And uh, when did you get the idea to do this? Um, were you inspired by something you saw last year? Or, uh, no, yeah. uh, in January I was uh, well, I was working on the DeLorean, uh -huh. the, the Back of the Future 3 DeLorean. Yeah. But it became so big, and it was supposed to be for Warner Fest. Yeah. But it became so big, I didn't have enough room to work on it. Yeah. I said I need to do something. I said, well, let me try Star Wars. Yeah. And I printed out. As a matter of fact, I printed out this first wing right here. Uh huh. And. I said, oh, it looks good. I'm going to go with it. Yeah. So yeah. it started at the end of January. Cool. Yeah, and so um, the wings open up and the, yeah. you have motors that turn the R2 head and the pilot's head too, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. All, yeah, it's all animated. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Well, I want to congratulate you again on just another beautiful build. Yeah, Thank you for spending a few minutes to tell us about it. Oh, yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay guys, well that is going to be a wrap for this video. I'm probably the last Wonderfest 2023 video going up on YouTube this weekend. I'm always on the tail end of these things. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the interviews that I've done this year. I really did enjoy doing those. And uh, I find the saddest thing now that, about these shows is that they just come and go so quickly. But I'm definitely looking forward to next year's show. Last but not least, I do want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers who stopped to say hello. I really do appreciate that. It's always a pleasure to see you guys in person. 
Uh, one subscriber reached out to me prior to the show because he just wanted to sit and talk for a little bit, and that's Randall Naylor. So thanks, Randall, for reaching out, and also thank you for bringing along this uh, little gift that uh, he gave me. This is a Star Trek Movie Memories book from William Shatner. Thanks again. I really do appreciate that. And one final note here. I thought you'd be interested. Uh, Shang Hui, who was standing first in line there to enter his model at the model show, uh, ended up winning gold for his scratch-built blockade runner. Congratulations, Shang Hui. That is a beautiful model. Well, coming up next on the channel in July will be my Moonbase Alpha Moon Buggy. So until then, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. <laughs>